Charmian. How do I say your name properly? Charmian. Charmian. Elbow me. How are you doing? Come on. Nice to meet you too. Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw. The next photo is is a photo of your baby. Uh, well, one of your babies. <laughs> and uh, how long did this baby take to, to be made? Uh, it was a year and a half. A year and a half. Yeah, it takes, yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> so I come from the, the land of book publishing and, and writing oh, yes. and stuff. Uh, so it's a box. And I know this feeling. You get a box with the prints of your book. And it's called Lantau, A Year on Lantau Island. And uh, how many prints of the book did you get? Did you make? I made a thousand copies. A thousand copies. <laughs> wow, wow. And then, uh, so on it is this beautiful photograph of this, uh, I don't know my butterflies. What's the species? That's a, blue cr a spotted crow butterfly. Spotted crow? Yeah. Okay. Is this the first book that you've made? Yes. It's your first book? Yes. <gasps> this was nice. an absolute dream. Nice. Dream of mine. Okay. To write a book. Okay. And uh, when I arrived on Lantau, I was astounded at the beauty and yeah. the diversity of life. Of course. We have, you know, over 250 different types of butterflies. Yeah. Thousands of moths, two mm -hmm. thousand, over 2,000 moths. Just incredible amount of, of dragonflies and, you know, just this, even the spiders. Diversity mm -hmm. is incredible. Yeah. And so I just couldn't get enough of it. Every time I went out, I could, I, it was like, you Candy. Know, safari. Yeah, yeah, safari. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seeing something new, especially in summertime. Mm -hmm. There'll be day after day, I'll yeah. see something that I never knew existed. I know that feeling, yeah. Yes. And, and I love writing. Mm-hmm. And so I literally, it just, it's a, it's a journal. Yeah. Okay. It's, um, it's not, I don't write every day, but I write through the year okay. and it's all based around the photos that I took over the year. Oh, nice. And so it's full of the photos of my, um, of my nature adventures. Amazing. And, um, and then I try to identify everything that I found out that Amazing. I saw. Yeah. So if somebody wants to order this book and they live in South Africa, can they get it? No, no, not, it's not, not available through Amazon or anything. No, like? no, it's just. Can they local. write you? They could write to me. Yes, okay. I'm happy to post. Do you them. have a do you have a do you have a website or is this just? <laughs> not yet. No. Not, okay. No, but yeah, they could. Um, that's actually that's my this year project. Ah, nice. Yes. Nice. Yes. Uh, you can get them at um, Bookazine okay. in Hong Kong. Okay. And also at the local bookshop in in Moi Wo. Okay. Uh, vibe. Okay. Yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure yeah. if somebody in South Africa, hint, hint, or somebody in, <laughs> in France, uh, oui, oui, want the book, you can always uh, look it up online and uh, find it. Um, so if I, I don't have a copy of the book right now, if I were to open it, how many pages is this book? 365? No, not that many. Uh, I don't know how many pages there are. It's a... Um, I, I don't really know. Okay. But yeah. it's okay, but, but it's, it's photographs it's year, and writing. It's a year of writing. Oh, wow. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Nice. My impressions and my experiences. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's rewind the tape a little bit. You've always wanted to write a book. That was one of your big projects. You put it down together. Now, who was it self-published? Were you published through a sort of a more established printer publisher? Like, how did you put this together? Well, I started off making a journal as a gift for my mother. Nice. Just to share what I was experiencing with her. And so I used just a, it's an online, it's a journal app where you can place photos. Oh, okay. And, yeah. What's and, that called? Oh. For people, if they're like, oh, I'd like to know what that is. Just look up online journal yeah, app. Yeah, online journal app. Yeah, sure. So I, I printed out two copies. Okay. Because it was quite expensive. Right. And then I just thought, it's just such a beautiful island. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people don't know about the nature and the diversity in Hong Kong. Right. When you think about Hong Kong, they often think about... The city. The city. Yeah. And so I think it's really important to share this knowledge. Right. Because I think when people know about it, they care about it more. Of course. Of and course. so, and that often helps in protecting it. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for example, even the, the rocks that we saw on the island... I think, you know, a few years ago, people were trying to motivate for a geopark in that area. Okay. And that that doesn't happen. But I would love for that to happen. Yeah. yeah because yeah. I think it's so important to protect what we have. And so one of the things I love doing as well is 
is sharing knowledge mm-hmm. and educating okay. people. And so um, I, I decided, well, I have all this, you know, I have the book already. And so I actually just used a local printer around the corner from, nice. from your office. Oh, nice. And uh, I just ordered a thousand copies. Amazing. And, and so, and, and I start up, actually, the, the owner of Vibe, it's a, a small bookshop in Moiwo. His name is Gary. Mm-hmm. And he is actually quite an interesting person. He has over 50 local authors. Um, he sells their books in his shop. And he, he just, he seems to gather, you know, musicians and writers and it's a bit oh, of a wow. hub. Yeah. It's a small little shop, but it's a bit of a hub of creativity. Mm-hmm. And so um, that's where I launched my book. Nice. And I did a book talk there. Nice. And yeah, that's, that's where I started. And he was just very encouraging. Wicked. So yeah, and then I got um, Bookazine uh, also took my book. So that was encouraging to me. That for sure. Yeah. I think, okay, so from my own experience in terms of professionally. Okay, so right now, for, for want of where to record... And because I was lazy, I didn't feel like going out to Lantau. I said, why don't you come to the office in Wan Chai? And you said, oh, I have to go to Wan Chai anyways. So right now we're at the, um, the office where I come and work a lot uh, with Po Chung. And uh, so all of this around us is, is his office. So he formed this company. And like I said, when you open the door and you look at the signage, it's a like good life initiative. You know, it's quite an interesting mm. setting to have this conversation. And what people don't understand is right now we're seated in a, in a room. It's filled with boxes, boxes filled with books. Yeah, so right now we're on the 10th floor. When we look out the window, what, what do you see? How would you describe what you see when you look out the window? Well, how would you describe the scene? The scene? Yeah. Yes, it is, a, it is absolutely jam-packed with <laughs> all sorts of things. You can see a lot going on here. Uh, there's a beautiful plant in the window and some lovely calligraphy that I'm appreciating. And yeah, then a, a bit of a gray sky after all the rain we had yesterday and an interesting building. So I love geometric shapes, so appreciate that. Yeah, it's very much Hong Kong mm. for sure. So we came up here. I set up our little talk. We're looking at the photos on the laptop. So part of my work here has been to put together books, to write books, uh, to publish books. And so I know the, the journey that you've gone through to, to sort of... Every day you go and you're kind of, you're, you're taking your experience of going around, you make the photographs, you come back, you sit down, you reflect, and you start stringing out that into a narrative that you're going to share with other people. So you said that you're really into educating or helping or using education in a way. So how does that shape other areas of your life? Like, are you a teacher? Are you like... How does that manifest? Well, I homeschool my kids. Okay. Yeah. So, and well, actually, Joel has already left home. He's in uni in Sydney. Okay. And my girls are still at home. But um, the other thing that I, I love to do is, is I've been to some schools and I've shown them uh, my book uh-huh. and I've talked to them about the things that I've seen. Right. And so, I've, actually, one of my absolute favorite stories is I went to um, a school in Discovery Bay and I showed them mushroom, mushrooms that looked like potatoes and caterpillars that looked like a snake mm-hmm. and, a, you know, a, a beautiful, huge moth, you know, the size of a dinner plate, beautiful, light, a pale mint green with moon markings. Yeah. Like a moon moth, you know, a yeah. Moth. And I showed all these incredible creatures to them. And then I played them a recording of a barking deer. Nice. Nice. So, yes. So the... A barking deer has a very distinctive, sharp bark. And if you're not aware of it, it can be quite a frightening sound in the bush. You wonder what it is. Mm-hmm. So I played the sound to them and I said, what do you think this is? Nice. And you could see that through all the things that they already learned about and these images that they'd seen, their imaginations were just were just put on fire. Nice. So I were getting, you know, giant frogs or elephants or crocodiles or orangutans. And the teacher actually interjects and she said, Everyone, there are no orangutans in Hong Kong. <laughs> the, exa- the, the suggestions were just not really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I told them it's barking deer, and I said, "Listen out! I've heard it in D- in Discovery Bay. I've yeah. heard them in the evenings. You can hear them in the hills." Uh huh. So yeah. my my barking deer story in Lantau is the first time I'd heard. I used to live on Lantau. I used okay. to live in Changsha. Okay. And uh, I used to walk my dogs and. 
we're walking and then one day we start hearing this woman shrieking, shrieking for her life. Like we're like, what the hell is that? Like this total human wow. shriek in the valley. Yeah. And what had happened was there's a so barking deer do these runs of barks. They can do, I think, something like, like, I don't know what the number, like 60 up to 80, one at a time sort of thing. And it's just to kind of alert other barking deer yeah. that are there or whatever. And um, uh, when you don't know what it is, it to us, absolutely. And it was in at evening at dusk. So, you know, my dogs were freaked out and we're like, what the hell is that sound? It's crazy. And and the other thing about for people who have no, no frame of reference, it's as big as a German shepherd. It's not okay. a large animal. Yes. They're just, they're small deer and they're really... They're shy, very shy. Super timid. Yes. Yeah. That sound like shrieks. It's amazing. Yeah. Actually, as Kathy and I started our first coast deer um, section, we saw a barking deer. Nice. <laughs> so that was amazing. very exciting. Yeah, yeah. Drive. What a and great start. it was right start. on the road. I couldn't oh, wow. believe it. Oh, wow, wow, yes. wow, wow, wow. And when it saw us, it, it bounded into the, into the forest. But wow, amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. You're absolutely right. Okay, so so the photographs are great. Now, were you moved into into putting a book together? Because I called it a baby. Because I like I, f- I feel that putting a book together is very much like gestating a baby. And some people it takes one year. Some people it takes three years. Whatever. And and for a lot of authors, a lot of people, once the book is born, it's like oh, it, was, it, can, it can be such a painful, laborious process. They're just like okay. I'd, I don't even want to see it anymore. So what's your relationship to your book at this point? Oh, I've loved Oh, you process. love your baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love the process. I love the, the, you know, the exploring. I love the learning process. Uh-huh. I loved writing it. Mm-hmm. I loved editing it. Every Everything about it. Okay. It was just an amazing experience. You know, it was an absolute learning process. Mm-hmm. I, I had never done it before. And, um, you know, I just, I just thought... I don't know how to do this if I just, I just have to take one step and yeah. just go, just go for it. Yeah. And it is quite a thing to share mm-hmm. with people yeah. your own thoughts. Yeah. And so that was for me quite a, a you know, a step of courage for me to do that, mm-hmm. to do that. But I just thought, I don't want to regret and not do things because I'm afraid or, right. you know. And so looking at it now, I think that, there's definitely things I could do better, but it was like an eye offering mm-hmm. and I just absolutely, yeah. So it is a precious thing for me. Yeah, it's like yeah, something yeah. that I still celebrate. And, of course. And, you know, when I see that butterfly, I just absolutely love that butterfly because yeah. it's, it's connected to my book. I, I have to say I'm disappointed that I don't have a copy I here. I actually have brought you one. What? <laughs> 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 great i love it i am oh you are awesome okay hold on hold on you delivered i love it i love it i love it it smells like a new book i love it uh, discover the wonders of lantau through charmian's journal and then inside a quick breezy leaf lots of beautiful photos text writing i love it I love thank it. you okay yes yes uh, I'm going to pimp the, the hell and bejesus out of it. This is great. So is there another one? Is there a volume two? I have uh, yeah, I have yeah, ideas. Yeah. I'm always no way. I'm ideas. never doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I would do the same format. Okay. I have another idea. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm working on that right now. Awesome. And yeah, so it's also about... It is based on Lantau, okay. but it's not in diary form. So it is, it is literally just, um, I'm working on the writing mm-hmm. and working on, um, different ways of how to share information mm-hmm. through illustrations or through photos. Right. I recently bought a camera oh, with a nice lens. <laughs> so, <laughs> Great. I love it. so this has been a huge challenge for me to learn nice. how to use macro lens. This is so great. Yeah. I love seeing how different people, like one of the people I had on the podcast, she was also not really thinking of herself as a photographer. And then she started making photographs of spiders. And uh, she, I think professionally, she's a, uh, a barrister or a lawyer, I think. And then her photographs, just uh, suddenly she started dis- discovering 
I really like doing this. And then so she bought, she graduated up from the small camera to like a proper image, like a camera. And then same sort of story where she's discovering this whole new interest and passion, which is really great. So you want, you want to mention which camera you got and you're, you're graduating to? Yes. I, what did I get? An Olympus. Okay. OMD. Yeah. 10. Nice. Nice. With a Z, is it Zico? Z- I, I Zico never know how to call it Zico lens. Yeah. Lens, sixty millimeter. Sixty, yeah. nice, nice. Yeah. Which is actually very good. Yeah, it's a very decent lens. It's nice. It's a beautiful lens. Yeah. What I did is I actually, um, I actually know the person that you just spoke about okay. the, with the with the spiders. Right. Um, and she's inspirational. Yeah. And we've had we've gone on walks together. Okay. And, yeah. We. You can. I, I know her last name. How they is it Sarah or Sasha. 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 Yeah. So I'm very bad with names. No, no, no offense. <laughs> Gerald, she's... right? Your name's Gerald. <laughs> no. Sasha. Sasha. Yes. Uh, oh, okay. she's, she's inspirational. No, so, she is. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I love that the both of you just kind of like we're gonna be we're gonna yeah because at this point the the mechanics of photography has been sort of take it has been reduce so people can just explore their expression right yes yeah and the other thing i absolutely love about hong kong is that there's um, a wonderful network of people sharing information Mm -hmm. and so sometimes i'll take a photo of of spider and send it to sasha and say what is this yeah if she doesn't know she will then send it to someone else right that has you know is very knowledgeable about the subject yeah and you know there's I've been uh, on night uh, moth safaris yeah. with Roger Kendrick. Okay. And he's phenomenal with um, anything that, you know, flatters. <laughs> right, right, right. And he's, you know, it was amazing how people are just sharing information yeah. and, and you know, really networking together. So what, So we're surrounded by this office and you're, you're, the words coming out of your mouth right now. So what we, what I've done with Poe, so Poe co-founded DHL. So you know DHL is just humongous. So I'm yeah. sure if you're now if you look around the room, you're gonna start seeing some DHL colors and like okay. for example, why is that a DHL cat yes. there? So he was one of the so I've I've worked with him for fifteen years to articulate and identify what was the magic about what he created, right? And because ultimately DHL doesn't make anything. It's just a courier comes and somehow this network around the world was created in 1972 where okay. they started right we really dove into that and so for example on that poster board are just identifying you know in chinese you can see but some of it is in, in, in english and just try to understand what are the different we're just all we do is we sit around and we talk and we, we try to dive into what is this thing that is a network a service network and so for example um speaking of books and babies this is one of the babies um, if you want, I can give you that one. Thank you. You're welcome. So what I would say, after the years that I've been looking at this, is that this network of people isn't unique to Hong Kong. Hong Kong is really crazy and unique because everything's so dense, right? Like, yes. it's really easy to, like, just around here, you know, it's just it's just so packed, and that's what makes it quite unique. But I'd say anybody around the world is, like, your connection and energy to other people is kind of, it's always there. Like Sasha is always, always there waiting yes. for you. And yes. then all of a sudden you guys connected and all of a sudden yes. there's that sharing. Yes. Sorry to lecture at you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. I absolutely love it. I love the connections. You just never, often the surprising ones. Yeah. Are, yeah. Well, yeah, well like, you just came into, okay. So me as just a normal human being, I welcome you into here. The first photo of the of the jellyfish, I had no idea that you have these really delicate starfish just hitching a ride, mooching food. Amazing. Yeah, incredible. The brittle stars. Yeah, yeah. amazing. There's, that has been my experience uh, of my time on Lantau, is that the more you delve into things, mm-hmm. it's just these incredible stories that just pop out. Like, I was running... Um, up towards tiger's head and I saw a little bee Mm -hmm. in the flowers and it was instead of the regular, you know, yellow stripes, yellow and black stripes, it was rainbow colored. Oh, wow. I just stopped dead in my tracks and I thought, how is it that I haven't known the existence of this bee? Yeah. And uh, it's called a blue banded bee. Right. But it can actually have different colors. Oh, wow. 
but mostly uh, you'll see a beautiful kind of light turquoise blue stripe mm-hmm, on, its, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And on its abdomen. And it's just the most incredible. Then the other thing I, I learned about them is that they are not, they don't live in hives, which I also just assumed all bees live in hives. Right. It actually burrows a okay. tunnel in the ground. Yeah. And then um, it lays an egg, leaves a little ball of pollen, and makes a little division, and then repeats the process. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just fantastic I had no idea. information. Like, just amazing discoveries. So, where did you live before Hong Kong? Sydney. Sydney. I think Australia's got to be pretty amazing, too, for its fun. Oh, it is. We had like, so much fun. Yeah. Bizarre creatures there. Yeah. And the plants, too. Incredible. I love it. Yeah, it is. It's amazing. Uh, how long were you living in Sydney for? Nine years. Nine years. And before that? In Cape Town. Cape Town. Another place. Which Another. Really, yes. Oh, like the dramatic. The famous there is the most diverse plant kingdom in the world. Oh, okay. Yeah, just incredible beauty. So you said earlier that you like to participate in these things where you end up... I think you said this. I thought you said this. That you go and you participate maybe in volunteer or whatever, and then pick up and learn scientific information as you go, right? Yes. it's um, There's a term, citizen scientist. Okay. And so um, the, the idea behind it is that just anybody can be involved in, in science. Yeah. And so there's an app called iNaturalist. Yeah. And so I use that uh, a lot where I, where I upload anybody. You can just upload very easily. Um, an image of something they see, mm-hmm. and then you'll have um, experts who will identify it. Right. So it's exciting for me to get the information of what I'm seeing to yeah. learn more, but it's also wonderful for the scientists because they have a huge amount of information. Yeah. So you just have thousands of people all uploading images over, you know, it's worldwide. Yeah. And actually, just recently, they have um, they have a, a weekend challenge, the city, city one? challenge, yeah, yeah. yes, to see how many different species can be recorded in the course of a long weekend. And so we are all out there hour after hour taking photos of every single thing that was you know, sure, moving, moving. Yeah. <laughs> or not moving, anything living. So it was just, I think that's, it's just so interesting for me to be a part of that in a yeah. small way. Yeah. Uh, in Sydney, I live near a marine reserve and uh, I volunteered there. And one of the things we did is, is we would go there we would just uh, watch the bay to make sure that no one was fishing. Okay. Um, and and we would educate people mm-hmm. about what was and you know we would speak to the divers and say what did you see right. today and right. then we would put up pictures, photos okay. on a board of what had been seen in the bay that day. Oh, okay, nice. And then people would walk along and we'd explain to them it's a marine reserve and this is what's been seen, and so it's just sharing information yeah. and being part of being part of the the you know, caring for our planet That's in a small way. Fantastic. One thing that maybe you could do when your children are off in university and you have the time. So Delian and I, we participated in this thing called Biosphere Expeditions. I don't know if you've heard of them. No. So you 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 pay to vacation with them for two weeks, but your so you have room and board Mm -hmm. but you go out with researchers to collect data and so in our case so they have different ones like macaw because what what they realize is collecting data you don't need a phd to collect data yes you know like temperature and water pressure all this stuff but you need the 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 scientific the phd to do to do the analysis Mm -hmm. so we would do the field research so we were about uh, i think uh, 15 people who would go out every day onto boats into in the Azores, and then wow. we'd go out, yeah, do a whale and dolphin um, um, field work. Fantastic. So just collecting all this, this yeah. research, and and it's one of those things which I'm sure you've had, where you you go out, you don't know what you're going to see, and suddenly it's all it's like it's almost a mystical experience. Yeah, it's so powerful. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Yes. So, so in terms of your own evolution and your own maturity and and sort of. Um, development, how would you kind of articulate the ingredients or steps or mindset that you need to have in order to kind of step out, you know, because like you said, you use the word brave, you know, I think you use the word courage a bit to have the courage to, I'm going to write a book and I'm just going to start, I'm just going to do it. So what kind of advice would you give 
or could you give to somebody who's thinking about, oh, I'd like to, but I just have this inertia? Right. I think um, actually one person that inspired me is um, a actually it's based on a movie called Maudie. Uh, and it's a true story of an artist in Canada. And she had a disability, but she had this desire to paint. Mm -hmm. this, she had to paint and she had huge uh, problems to overcome and terrible adversity, but she just continued painting. And there was one person who recognized this aspect of her. And I think, I think that it's important to know we all have something to give to this world. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's easy to look at other people and say, they are so much better than me. Right. And you never feel that you can actually open up yourself and right. give what you have. Okay. And so uh, with this, with this lady Maudi, she just, people recognized her art. Mm -hmm. And now she's a well-known artist and, you know, and her, and her paintings are, are sought after, but just the, the amazing joy and the, she, she was never trained, but she just expressed herself through her medium. And right. because she just did it a lot, it became an expression of art that was unique. And so for me, I felt, I, I know I've spoken to people and they have dreams or they have things that they want to do with their life, but they feel because they're not professional or they don't have the training, or maybe there's someone, you know, who's better than them. They don't feel like they can actually do it. Mm. And so I just, I just think we, it doesn't matter if we just, if it's not perfect first time around or, you know, the, 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 everyone has a learning process. Sure. And so, and, you know, even with the greatest artists, even their learning process is is now valuable. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I think it's that idea of embracing life, right? And and you know allowing yourself to to just share who you are mm -hmm. and not worry too much about the naysayers or the people who will you know criticize. But you know that is actually you know just part. Take on any you know constructive criticism. See where you can grow and learn. Sure. You don't have to be pretend that you someone that you're not right but just yeah embrace life really. yeah 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 ah. so my name means happiness joy laughter your name kind of aligns with that as well do you feel growing up that your name had an influence on your worldview oh absolutely I, my, I was actually called Annie Anne, until okay. I was 15. Oh. It was a, it was a nickname. Okay. Charmian, Charmian, Charmiani. Okay. Annie. Right. And, um, and then when I turned 15, I felt that I, I wanted to change my name back to Charmian mm -hmm. because of the meaning. Right. Except joy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally get that. I feel that does set a certain tone. It's not my way of turning it to be about me, but it's more about Hopefully, we are going to get people inspired to, um, because it's not magic, but you sat down and you put, I'm, I'm leafing the book. This is the sound of a book, of a nice, beautiful book with beautiful photos. <laughs> this is great. So hopefully, we'll, 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 we'll inspire people to, to, to also discover their own co-steering this book. I think that's good. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is great. Give me an elbow. Nice. Nice. <laughs>